pretty cool moment in Daytona on Saturday night. As uh, you know, I, I thought back to the Ned Jarrett, Dale Jarrett, hmm. Michigan thing, and it was it was cool to see Jeff Burton be able to celebrate his son Harrison's first win. But man, did that blow the playoffs upside down, Adam? Big time, blew it upside down, and I. I think we all know that that's a reality of this format and that race falling. Do we where it all does. know that? Though? <laughs> well, you'd be kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but man, from that far back, I mean, that was that was a long shot of all long shots to get into the playoffs. When you talk about where Harrison was in the points to be able to to get one of those final positions, but uh, ran a great race, kept it clean. NBC had that graphic late of the four or five drivers, maybe six or seven that had not been in one of the previous accidents. And Harrison was one of them. And and I thought when Kyle Busch got out a little bit, I'm like, whoa, whoa he's, he's out a little too far. And then that ended up being the difference. And Harrison got that that run, got a big win, and now he's in the playoffs. So it's, it's crazy what a turn everything took on Saturday night. I mean, the amazing thing is, Jim, he is still, Harrison Burton, still 34th in points. He is still the lowest guy in points among all the full-time starters this year. Yep. And that's what the system's been for quite some time, uh, contrary to what apparently a large segment of social media people discovered. Uh, I mean, we they even did away still, with they the, thought it was still the top thirty. Yeah, right? we even did away with the top thirty rule. <laughs> Nobody seemed to remember that either. And it was funny because, like, when those things happen, it's like it happened. One of, that first came up when the Kyle Busch situation happened with um, when he broke his leg, and people were like, oh, it shouldn't the point shouldn't matter, or Tony Stewart, the point thing shouldn't matter. So they got rid of it. Now all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh man, he's thirty fourth in points. The whole point is to win, right? He won. Uh, and that that's what you do to get in. And I think that, uh, it's great. He didn't, he didn't even fluke into it. I thought he drove really, really great race. The only thing that was interesting, I was watching it from home and I didn't catch it at first. And I, and I don't think the TV announcers did it first, but it was like, after the celebration was starting, everybody realized for a moment, oh, he went below the yellow line. Right. <laughs> Boy, the, yeah. I was like, oh my God, they've congratulated Jeff and everything, and if they have to take it all back, that's really going to suck. Well, it's funny, because Lee Jeff, he actually did. He goes, I don't want to throw water on it right, right now, but right. They, are, they are reviewing this. And that, and that was a yeah. penalty by rule when you consider how he went down there. Obviously, there was no question. He was forced down oh, there, yeah. and yeah. he shouldn't have had the right. one taken and, away. And it should have been reviewed, right? Because that's absolutely. What's, that, yeah. absolutely. But the fact that all of the celebration had already started, and everything. Oh, Jeff, go down there and be with your boy, you know. And then they're like, <laughs> they're reviewing the finish. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere, Regan Smith has broken another television because if you remember, Tony Stewart oh, forced yeah. Regan down quite similarly. NASCAR yep. not as friendly with their ruling on that Sunday. That, I don't in know favor forcing of down maybe maybe not have been the specific uh, right, thing yeah. at that time. But, yeah. but then they went right to the in car camera and you saw Kyle Busch just go bam. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh which you know, and I thought they made the right call. He won, that was the right call. Uh he obviously got shoved down there. But um great, great I thought it was a really good race, great finish, considering everything that happened. You know, it was no slouch navigating that, as you pointed out, that those final two laps. Um, surprise, there wasn't another wreck. But uh, I was happy for Harrison. Gosh, I've seen him since he was first started racing, running around the garage after his dad. Uh, been to a few out of the way tracks to see him run KN East and so forth. But I was happy for him. I know it's a tough year. He things didn't work out with the Wood Brothers like he had hoped, but um, he still got a. I think he still got a long career ahead of him. Oh, that's the thing. I mean, for a guy that a couple weeks ago lost his ride for next year and ride with the Wood Brothers, it had to be just such an uplifting feeling. And he has admittedly said this week, he goes, you know, my phone's not exactly ringing off the hook, and I'm not sure it's going to make a lot of difference. But, boy, does it feel good for me. And he says a lot of the guys on that team had never been to Victory Lane before, Adam. And it, it's so cool, the family connection. And someone pointed this out. And when I say family connection, not just the Burtons, but the Wood Brothers and all the history that is there between both of those families. But someone pointed out, and this was one of the most remarkable things. It, when Brad Keselowski got penalized on, on a restart, someone said the last time the six got penalized on a restart at Daytona, the 21 won the race. Trevor Bain. And I'm like, and I read this after the fact. And there were replies like cheering on it. It's your turn, Harrison. Go. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like an hour earlier, someone puts that out there on social media. And lo and behold, the 21 wow. 
wins the race. The the irony of that, that was, was David pretty, Reagan, right? David Reagan, yep. who's leading on a restart yep. and, and gets out of line yep. before the start finish line. Yep. And Trevor Bain gets shoved by Jeff Gordon to win the Daytona five hundred and and the twenty one car gets its one hundredth win with Harrison Burton after the six had had a penalty. And and who knows if Brad hadn't been penalized how that race could have been different because he was such a, a good had such a good car himself. But anyway, I thought that was quite interesting. And it was such a feel good win. You know, Harrison Burton, I think, is a guy well liked in the garage area. And the Wood Brothers, you know, such respect throughout the garage for the Wood Brothers. And this 100th win had been a long time in coming, Jim. Oh, yeah. I mean, and here's the thing like, a lot of people have been kind of hard on Harrison about having not won there yet. But in reality, I mean, um, ever since they made this alliance with Penske, They've only had one other win since it started, and that was Ryan Blaney, who won one time with them. So it's not like, you know, there's been a bunch of people winning in this situation. Uh, they have run well uh, at times, run better than they have recently. But I also think that they've had potential. They just have not been able to capitalize on it. And I thought, like you pointed out, there's probably a lot of people over there who are experiencing NASCAR Cup Victory Lane for the first time, which is a huge thing. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, whether or not he'll be the driver, they're still going to be able to uh, at least enjoy and participate in one round of the playoffs, get to do something that they otherwise, uh, the Wood Brothers, I don't think have ever been in the playoffs. Because right? they, they were part time when were Ryan won when, when, uh, and, and would have locked now with, in. With Ryan, were they, did, did they make it with Ryan? Uh, De Benedetto never got in, I don't think. I, I, think, I, would just, to, I think De Benedetto just missed it. If I yeah, yeah I think so too. But yep. either, either way, it's been one of a, very few opportunities to take advantage of. And you never know what happens. People say, what, you win the first one and a bunch of them come, right? Mm -hmm. So who mm -hmm. knows? Yep. Well, and that's the thing. You know, we know they're a satellite Penske team. So this means all four Penske cars are in the playoffs. I, how much does that help the Wood Brothers, if at all, going into the playoffs, Adam? Well, I, I think here's the deal. You want to have momentum in any situation. To me, what they have going for them, because I think initially you look at the points and you're like, man, <laughs> I mean, they don't have a lot of points, as Jim pointed out, and, and they won at a super speedway. And so these are the, the kinds of tracks that produce these upset victories. What can they possibly do once we get to the postseason? The opening race in the playoffs is another drafting track, Atlanta, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. where we had another huge surprise earlier this year when Daniel Suarez won. Yep. So right away, you're like, well, hey, who knows, right? And then after that, you've got Watkins Glen. You've got Bristol. These are the types of races where crazy things happen, the, the wild card type events. So initially on the surface, I think it, when you look at their production throughout the year, you say – it's nice they got in the playoffs. The run probably ends here. Then you look at that opening round schedule, and you're like, wait a minute. They might have a real chance to go out and do something, not only because these tracks kind of pull the field toward you a little bit, but also it could have uh, races that could produce trouble for some of these other drivers that open the door for them to move on. I, I mean, I agree with Adam. I think the bigger thing is it's not even you don't even have to look at it as a place where he can win. You just you can look at that first round, right? I mean, this round more than I would say previous years, and say if you just stay out of trouble, you could he could he could make his way to the second round. And I, I think the numbers say if you average a top twenty finish in the opening round of the playoffs, you get to the second round. That that's been the equation in recent and that, years. But that was also under a different schedule, which uh, absolutely. I would, and I would say yep. that this schedule has the potential to shake things up even more than in previous years. Maybe not a top 20, but a top 22, top 23 yeah. because of the types yeah. of tracks. I agree. I mean, but, you know, 30 yeah. people could get in a wreck at Atlanta. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just looking right now, just thinking real quickly off the top of my head. I mean, he's going to start with five playoff points and I'm trying to glance and see. So you know, at the moment he'll be what, about 12, uh, 13? Probably, well, Austin Cedric's got seven. Uh, Suarez has six. Logano has seven. Uh, let's see. Bowman has five. And He'll he's be 12. above the people who make it yeah. with no wins. Busher has two. He'd be 11th. Ty Gibbs has two. He'd be 10th, so he'd have three. So, I mean, he, yeah, he, he's not going to be in last place. No, he won't be in last. I mean, well, even if, even if somebody it. else new wins this weekend, he won't be last. From 10th on back, your margin for error. 
is is so slim. And, and maybe you could graduate that up to seventh or eighth, but definitely from tenth on back, you just don't have a lot of margin for error. So if any of those drivers goes out and gets involved in the big one at Atlanta, immediately there's this infusion of pressure. And then I think about the games you can play, you know, from a strategy standpoint at Watkins Glen to steal some points when everybody else, Harrison's not going to be a threat to win at Watkins Glen. All the drivers that are a threat to win are going to flip the stage. Harrison doesn't have to do that, which means you can go out and steal some stage points. So the opportunity is there to find your way on to the next round. If you're an underdog driver, that's what they'll be. And uh, momentum's on their side as well, as I, I said. So maybe they can do something special here in the first three And races. you're a lot closer than you were at 34th. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's right. You're guaranteed to finish no worse than 16th 16. in the standings. All of a sudden, you jump 28 here, here's points. Here's the thing. He might be out of a ride, points. but he's going to yeah. have a career-best finish in points. Absolutely. Yeah. There you go. All right.